jam a little bit. See if this thing is working. <laughs> backing track. I hope I'm not just randomly jamming by myself. I hope you guys are getting that backing track. Let me know in the comments. what uh, pack it was from. I think it was like a Oregon Blues or a Bourbon Street Blues was the name of it. All right. So I'll just uh, jam a little, talk a little. Just want to get sure, want to make sure that my video and audio is working. I got a cool little footer here. 
I don't know, I just kind of randomly put it up there. Look, I can make it go in and out, in and out. Uh, this is, okay, let's start up here. Do I find the string butler works? It does. It's not perfect, but it'll take a three on a side guitar um, and make it a little bit better as far as uh, tuning stability. But uh, it still goes out of tune. It's not like an Evertune system or anything. But it is, you know, better enough where I'm comfortable taking this out on the road and I'm comfortable with it staying in tune. This guitar is a Rock and Roll Relics. Um, Billy Rowe out in uh, the Bay Area builds these awesome guitars. This one I actually found on Reverb used. Um, and apparently he's he said he's going to build me a, um, like a, a yellow burst heartbreaker, which is his Les Paul type guitar. But uh, I've played a couple of his guitars uh, for some demos, and man, they're awesome. They're built really well. They're super comfortable. The tone is great. I think originally these came. This came with uh, David Allen pickups, and I wanted the double cream look, so I had to get Demarzios. So this is a super distortion and the uh, PAF, the 36th anniversary PAF in the neck. And as usual, I'm plugged in through the UAD um, Pete Thorne amp plug in which is also the amp that I use in most of my uh, demo videos hey RJ I've got a constellation fuzz man that constellation fuzz is an awesome uh, design I used it on the road when I went to Europe and I just kept it on the uh, the fuzz face setting but all of those settings are really cool I mean, I like all of those settings. Uh, that was a, definitely a home run pedal. I have it upstairs on one of my pedal boards. I would have, I think next time, maybe I'll set up a bunch of fuzz pedals and uh, we'll go through them. I'm not really set up for that stuff right now. But you got a Thunders. Nice. Yeah, this is a Thunders Custom. Um, such a cool guitar. Can't really tell, but it's got this crackling on the finish. That looks awesome. And it's like this copper, orangey finish I really like. Advantage to wrap strings. Well, um, if you're talking about flat wounds versus round wounds, I use flat wounds on my my big hollow body Gibson Barney Kessel. It's a mellower tone. It's a little less sustainy, I guess, but it's just got this, you know, thick, vintagey tone to it. What's my go-to riff when I first pick up a guitar? Probably just A, G, D over F sharp. Let me tune up. Um, I just put new strings on this, so it's it's gonna stretch out a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so I'm seeing a little bit of uh, dropped frames. Sorry about that if um, if my video feed is in and out. I thought I had it fixed. Oh well, maybe the uh, internet is busy today, tonight. Uh... Robert 
Robert, this is the uh, UAD plugin, the the Sewer PT100. Everyone, if you haven't checked out Robert Baker's channel, you have to subscribe. He has some of the coolest videos. Um, check out his Instagram too. Uh, super badass player. I love that guitar you have. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. Acacia, Acacia. Um, that guitar, I was gonna mention it. It reminds me of a um, Iceman, like a it's a. A cross between like a Les Paul and a Nice Man or something. It's awesome. Yeah, sorry about the dropping frames. I'm I'm trying to monitor my live um my OBS feed and the YouTube feed, which is like a good 20, 30 seconds delay, so it's it's confusing, but I'm I'm seeing a couple dropped frames. Hopefully, it'll get better. Um, yes. Let's see. Will I be posting more on the Euro Tour vlog? Yeah, I have. I'm actually um, working on the last one, which is Amsterdam, Luxembourg. I just haven't had time. Well, I've been lazy. No, I haven't been lazy. I've been working on a bunch of demos, so I haven't had time to work on videos. Uh, of my own personal enjoyment which I have like a list of all these vlogs and lesson ideas that I want to do I won't give a, anything away but one involves a talk box and um, I I'm excited to work on it I just want to get through some gear demo videos uh, before I hit that stuff but I'll, I'll have some more some more of those cool um, lesson and vloggy type videos coming up. Have I considered using Skype? Um, I used to do Skype lessons a long, long time ago, and it was a little bit difficult back then, so maybe it's a little bit easier now, but um, I just haven't had the time to do one-on-one uh, -on -one lessons. Um, maybe this winter when I'm off the road a little bit and I'll be home more, uh, I think that would, I'd be totally down to do something like that. Hey, someone was at the Indianapolis show at Stone, for the Stone Sour show. That was a great show. Was that the last one? I think that was the last one of that run. Um, great theater. Yeah, the Del Guapo's album. Someone was, someone else today was asking me about it. Um, nothing yet uh, in the future, but it's always on, on in the back of my mind. So um, I don't know. I'm trying to work on some other projects, pet projects that I want to do. Um, like uh, I think I was telling people on the last live stream that I was doing, hoping to do some kind of B3 trio blues project this winter so be on the lookout for that hey from greece i got a bunch of pedals from greece from the guys at crazy tube circuits never been there though i would love to go I need to take some shred lessons from somebody. Somebody teach me. Robert. Question for you. I'm trying to decide Vox and Orange Amps. Well, I, it depends on the models, but I don't have a ton of experience with Orange Amps, unfortunately, but I know a lot of guys that have been using them. And from what I've heard, um, they're pretty awesome. Uh, as far as Vox, some usually I'll get like an AC30 as backline on the road, and I know how those sound. So I'm pretty familiar with those. I think with any amp company or any company, is as long as you get a good one, it's going to be a great amp. You know, it's... 
you get just gotta try them all out. <laughs> Hey Montreal, uh, is this guitar neck heavy? Not really, it doesn't do the, well I don't have a strap on, but it, it doesn't do the neck bomb thing that you might think it's somehow weighted really nicely centrally. Have I, what's the nearest you've been to the Caribbean? Have you gigged there for? Yes! So I used to live in Miami and I used to play uh, in a reggae band called Inner Circle. They sing this song. Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? If you've ever seen Cops, yeah, they sing that. But yeah, I've, uh, I've toured in Jamaica. Where did we go? Grenada. Um, yeah, I love the Caribbean. Do I have an idea for my licks on my jam videos or do I improvise on the fly? For the most part, it's all, f uh, I want to say first take improvisation, but I've, I've had bad days where I've done like 20 takes. But for the most part, it's all improv. There was a couple videos that I think I might have, you know, came up with something prior uh, to start out the solo with, and then I took it from there and just kind of improved over that. But for the most part, it's it's just easier for me to improv. <laughs> I know you know stuff. Come on, why am I dropping frames? See, now I'm seeing dropped frames. All right, can't look at that. Why am I dropping frames? Sorry, guys. Name my two favorite scales. Um, <laughs> I don't have a favorite scale. Blue scale and uh, Phrygian dominant. How long does it take me to prepare and create my demo? So I, I'm, I might be skipping some people's questions. Um, it's running pretty fast. Um, it's sometimes I spend a lot of time on my demos uh, as far as making backing tracks and coming up with like different arrangements. And sometimes like I'll just, you know, find a backing track that I like and turn the cameras on and just basically what I was doing earlier, just jamming over it and hopefully um nothing in that i play is shitty <laughs> oh i love that riff all right uh, if i had to do a gig with one guitar and one amp what would you go with? Gosh. Man, I'm very comfortable with tellies, so I would bring one of my tellies. And an amp. Eh, it's funny. I've been digging these matchless DC-30s on the road. It's usually my the amp that they give me for backline to use when I'm doing fly dates and... I've been really comfortable with those amps now. Should give a studio tour. I will once I clean my studio. It is a mess right now. You can't really see much um, other than these guitars back here. Sorry, it's dropping frames. <laughs> Hughes and Kettner. I'm not familiar with that particular amp. Uh, I need to get out more. What was your progression as a musician from when you first started playing to where you are now? What were the steps? 
Great question. I just actually did an interview today uh, with these guys that are doing a really cool project called Get to Know Nashville, and uh, they asked me a question similar to that. So what I told them, uh, I started out playing in cover bands, wedding bands, um, and eventually I met, you know, certain people that were um, in touring bands, like Inner Circle and, and Ricky Martin, and really it's all in who you meet. Uh, you just meet the right people, right place, right time, and um, they not only like the way you play, but they like your personality. They have to like your personality because you have to be a good hang on the road because there's nothing worse than having like a crappy person on the road who's just like a, you know, a Debbie Downer or, you know, drinks too much or does too many drugs, you know. So you just have to be professional, but uh, where was I going with that? Um, yeah. I tell people you just got to get out there and meet people. How many guitars do I normally take on a gig? I, I, I'm lazy. If I'm, if it's a bus gig or like a driving gig, I might take two. But if it's a fly date, I'll take one. And I've been taking my headless Kiesel because it's light and it's small, and no airlines give me shit about it putting it in the overhead. So, um, but when I bring one guitar, I make sure the guitar is in great condition that it doesn't break strings, um, that it's reliable, stays in tune. That's my biggie. Yes, Robert Baker, burn. That's the only part I know. Uh, any hand pain when playing a long time? Yeah, there's been... There's been times where I've played like two-hour gigs, like two-hour wedding gigs sets and you know my hands would cramp up um the other the only other time that it's cramped up was when i played i played in a bar band in south florida and now and then they would call out um freebird and they would make me solo for way longer than the recorded version and i would just get caught up shredding as fast as I could and my hands would get like stiffen up and like get so tired but that's a fun tune to uh, jam over opinions on love pedal I have very little experience with love pedal um, I've heard I checked out Josh Smith's Chula um boost i think and that was a cool pedal other than that i really have no experience with the, those pedals but if anyone works for love pedal that wants some demos let me know what is the single most useful piece of fretboard theory that you've learned so far oh, man that is a hard question fretboard theory I don't know. I would, you know, when I first started doing three notes per string stuff and just coming up with different patterns, that opened up, you know, a whole heck of a lot of stuff, you know, because coming from just like pentatonics and then, um, e, you know, playing modes, uh, three notes per string and doing all these different patterns and then eventually learning the pentatonics three notes per string which I'm still trying to f get comfortable with because it's so weird but... the stretches are so big just finding my way around that is you know I'm always learning something new you know if I could spend a couple hours a day practicing I'd be happy <laughs> Yeah, man, Robert, it's the studio tour thing. You gotta, you know, we gotta make it right. We gotta make sure the the 
the studio's clean and we that we have some cool stuff and right now everything is like falling all over the place and stuff uh let's see what else what genre of music got you in the into guitar it always amazes me how versatile you play from blues to jazz thank you leo um so when everyone when anyone asks me how i got into guitar i tell them it was uh michael j fox that got me into guitar back to the future was my uh was my movie that got me into skateboarding and guitar playing and so i got into really the chuck berry aspect of that movie um from Chuck Berry, I got into Clapton, and from him, I got into Beck and Hendrix and Zeppelin, and then from there, oh gosh, I don't even know, Steve Ray Vaughan. I got into Shred around that same time, so like Satch and Vi and all the metal stuff. So I grew up, you know, in the 80s. I'm an 80s kid, um, and I started playing guitar probably around 1985, I don't know. If some of you were born then, but um, MTV, you know, was coming up, all these videos, so I was exposed to a ton of different music, and um, from there, I, you know, I got really into guitar playing, and I wanted to get better, so I begged my parents for me to take um, jazz lessons at the local community, it was, it was like a community art uh, school, art school. So I took jazz and I got into that. And then uh, when I graduated high school, I decided to go to college for music and, and pursue jazz further. So there was a time in my life where I was a hardcore, like I only did jazz. I only played jazz. You know, I put the shredding distortion stuff on the back burner and I had a hollow body and studied jazz. I wanted to be you know, the next Jim Hall, Pat Metheny guy. And after I graduated from college, actually, no. So my senior year of college, I I almost moved to Nashville. This was in 1999, and I almost moved to Nashville because I thought I was going to be the next Brent Mason, Dan Huff guy. And uh, I wanted to be a studio guy, so I came to Nashville on my spring break to check it out. And I was so intimidated by all the amazing guitar players who were here that I decided, no, maybe Nashville's not for me. Ended up staying in South Florida for a little bit. Um, and I got into the touring and, and studio scene there, and it was fine. I was enjoying it. After a while, I got sick of it, moved to L.A., did various things out there rock and roll pop r&b um latin stuff um and then i got a call to do this thompson square gig here in nashville um and then right around that time when i got that the call for this nashville gig uh, we had decided to leave la and move to chicago because my wife and i are from the midwest so you know we want to go back to chicago we have a ton of friends there um, so I was basically living, I don't say I was living in Chicago. I was paying rent in Chicago, but I was going back and forth between Chicago and Nashville. And, uh, eventually we decided, you know, Nashville is the place and it's been the place for the past couple of years and we love it here. And this is uh, an amazing town, you know, not only if you're a guitar player, but if you're any kind of musician, it's an awesome <laughs> All right. I was talking a little bit. I missed some of these questions. Let's see if I can catch up. Has playing through the various amps cabs provided to you at the venue ever thrown you off the tone you're accustomed to? Absolutely. I've gotten some shitty amps on the road. Well, Yeah, my camera just turned off because it has a 30-minute uh, time limit. So, yeah, it's about about 30 minutes. So, uh, I'm still here. 
Okay, so yeah, I've played through some shitty amps. I've gotten like uh, on the last tour in Europe, I got a um, what did I get? I got a Fender Twin Reverb that had like uh, broke had one bad tube and was just like humming the whole time. So in sections of the show where you know I wasn't playing and it was just like piano vocal, I had to turn my amp on standby, and as soon as I was ready to play i would flip it on when the band came in so no one could hear that awful buzzing sound but yeah you never know what you're going to get on the road um, but usually i can make it work um with the pedals i bring and it's never horrible you know even if i get some kind of solid state amp which i knock on wood i'd never get but um yeah i usually can make it work who is my favorite non-guitar playing musician? Ooh. I, I'm a big fan of drummers. Um, so who's my favorite drummer? John Bonham. Yeah, Bill and Tess was a great movie. Wild Stallions. Uh, call me weird Nile Rogers Prince and Jeff Baxter Steely Dan. All right. That's not weird. Little Besame Mucho. I prefer flatter or smaller radius fretboards. <clears throat> it really depends on the guitar. Like, um, if if I buy a Tele and I want it to be like a vintage style Tele, then I'll want, you know, a seven and a whatever, seven and a quarter, seven and a half radius um, for that feel, you know. Um, but for the most part, like shreddy guitars, I like flatter radius and um the scale it really doesn't bother me i like gibson scale i like uh fender scale um it's just like you know individual individual guitars are just that i don't have like hopes of getting the one guitar that i could you know do every do everything with <laughs> That's why we buy all these guitars, because the excuse is, oh, I need this Telly to do this country gig, or I need this Les Paul to do this hard rock gig. So, you know. Thank you for that question. How did you integrate bebop Parker licks into my blues playing? It's just something. It was more like, how did I integrate my blues playing into these bebop licks? Because, like I said before, I was a hardcore jazz head, and I had for I didn't really you know, study blues up until, until like my thirties, really, you know, I knew the blues scale and I knew how to play basic blues stuff, but I never really studied it. I never dissected it and like fell in love with it until, you know, I was an older adult. But so, um, yeah, so it was more the opposite where I had to relearn or learn for the first time how to play blues do i play country uh i play whatever they call country nowadays which i just lost you but yeah do i like country i like yeah i do i'm not gonna lie i like <clears throat> not only classic country Merle, George Jones, um, Johnny Cash, you know, all that stuff. But even some of the stuff that's on the radio, you know, gets catchy. Today I was listening to, like, Spotify playlist of, like, you know, today's top hits, you know, of pop tunes. I don't listen to pop tunes, but I wanted to check it out. And there was a couple tunes there that I was like, yeah, I understand this. You know, I dig it. I understand why the kids are going crazy all over this stuff. Uh, 
Paul P. Man, thank you for the kind words. Yeah, that exercise video was something that I wanted to do for a while. The vid where I did the, the laying back video, some players. Oh, gosh. Uh, off the top of my head, Mateus Asado, he's got a very laid back feel when he plays, which I really dig. I'm sure a lot of you guys dig it too. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of funky guitar players that just have this laid back rhythm. Prince, you know. Some of the James Brown guys. As far as soloing laid back, I don't know. A lot of players play a little bit laid back. I think that's what makes him great you know it's hard to listen to a player that plays right on top it's not hard to listen to a player but you know as a p players that uh, play on top of the beat as opposed to a little bit behind the beat I'm I'm more into the behind the beat feel but like John Mayer will play laid back a lot I love Brent Mason's playing too. He was, you know, I bought his VHS country hot licks video when I was in college and I, I even played his um, Hot Wired at my senior recital. I don't know how to play it anymore. Yeah, something like that. I'll learn it. Thanks, Force. Thanks, Doug Ward. Yeah, even the camera needs a timeout. Yeah, this. So I got this Canon mirrorless camera that I set up for my um, live stream. So far, it's been working great. Uh, I think it looks better than the webcam I had. And um, the only downfall is that the it shuts off after 30 minutes, and there's no. I don't think there's a way to get around it. <laughs> Give us three things that will make a better gigging musicians. Gigging musician. Oh gosh. Three things. It could be any three things. Maybe you know, just um, make sure you listen to the other people that you're playing with. I think if. I can't give you three, but I'll give you that one. It's all about um, listening and and playing with the other people, not just being, you know, an independent musician in the middle of, you know, other musicians. You want to kind of get something cohesive with the other musicians, and that's the beauty of playing music. It's playing off one another and... Um, it's like you're having a conversation with the other guys. Where do I get my leather jackets? Well, are you the guy that was asking me about my leather jacket? Um, that one that I've been wearing that I've had for like eight or nine years is a Japanese brand. I, I can't remember what brand it is, but I bought it uh, in L.A., at some store on Melrose. And it's beat up, it's smelly. I don't think I've ever washed it. Maybe I've sprayed some Febreze on it or something, but yeah. Um, and then I bought another leather jacket from this company called Straight to Hell. They're in Chicago, or they're based out of Chicago. Is anyone from Chicago out here? <laughs> Shaw Audio Amps. I've never tried them, but I know some friends here in town that have them. And they have nothing but awesome things to say. Oh, man. Where am I now? Oh, greetings from Switzerland. Hey. I'm buffering. All right, greetings from Switzerland. Hey, Switzerland. <laughs> either have to join a band or go to music school to learn guitar which did you choose and why 
Um, I chose to go to music school to learn guitar, uh, partially to make my parents happy because they wanted me to go to college. Um, I probably wouldn't have changed it. I think uh, I'm happy with my decision to go to music school. Um, I think it's a little, it was at the time for me it was risky to not go to college and and hope to join a cool band because everyone knows how hard it is to keep a band together and or find the right people to start a band with. So I didn't have the balls to do that. But I know some people that have and are super successful. So it, it's you know it's hit or miss. Yeah. Right now, I'm a fan of James Bay. James Bay is great, man. I've been listening to his new record. Uh, Jack Garrett, I'm not familiar with, but I will write that down somewhere and uh, check him out. Uh, and a Strat, because it's a Strat. Where was that from? Can you play one of your Eastwood guitars? Uh, Yeah, which one? I'd like to find one that is sort of in tune. How about the baritone? Oh yeah. Let me get a let me get a cleaner tone because my ears are tired of the distortion. Okay. Woo! That's not in tune. Sometimes I'll tune it down to A. Oh, I love I love baritones. I don't know about you guys. All right. This is the Eastwood side jack baritone. Um, I love this guitar. I love this is the only baritone I think I have. Uh, I've played the Dan Electro baritone, which I really liked, but I had this on that back. <laughs> Nashville tuning. I rarely have used it in the past, so I'm not really familiar. Am I into Schofield? Yes. Uh, I was really into him in college, um, and I just kind of rediscovered his more recent albums uh, not too long ago. I really like that um, the country album that he put out where he covered what did he cover? He covered Jolene you know that Dolly Parton song but he did it you know swinging and it's badass. Three favorite eighty shredders. Gosh. Um, I listened to a lot. Like the first shredder that I really, really, really liked was, you know, besides Eddie, it was Joe Satriani, um, and then Steve Vai. Like that whole, basically anyone that was playing an Ibanez guitar in 1989 was, I was listening to. Paul Gilbert, yeah, Paul Gilbert was a favorite of mine. He still is, man. I just saw, I didn't just see it, but Mr. Big played here in Nashville. Was it last year? It might have been, yeah, I think it was last summer. And it was like packed. And, you know, he's just amazing. 
amazing. The whole band. Dream favorite artist would love to play with. Man, if he was still alive, I'd say David Bowie. Uh, I would love to play with Sting. And Clapton. I would love... I saw Clapton when I was... 10 years old at the Palace of Auburn Hills in Michigan and the next day I I asked my dad if I could get a Dunlop crybaby because I saw him playing White Room and I just I wanted that sound but yeah Clapton has always been one of my favorites does anybody know if Doyle is still playing uh, with Clapton I think he is Uh, let's see I am way behind here let's see uh, looking Judd Austin's on a gig oh man don't watch me while you're playing while you're on the bandstand Have I been to Norm's? Yeah. I used to live in L.A., and I used to live in the Valley, and I would go into Norm's, you know, once in a while. Um, I never, I didn't ever bought anything there, I don't think. I think I was looking at, like, a an Epiphone, I think it was a Crestwood or something. I remember looking at that, wanting to buy that, but I never bought anything there. That's my that's one of my favorite progressions is just the minor one chord to the five dominant seven chord. You know, it's very Latin. I could so I could just like solo over that for a day. I know it's stupid. All right, where am I? All right. If there were only two types of guitar, eight string or three string, which would you play? An eight string, of course. I was just in uh, London, and I was playing uh, a Keith Marrow Schecter eight string, and I had never played an eight string. Uh, what the kids these days call gent. I was genting. I was genting hard. I jammed out for 20 years, got married, and lost my music mojo. How do I get it back? Man, uh, I can't answer that. <laughs> I don't know. Tilt the camera up a tiny bit. How about I do this? Whoa, look at that. Hydraulic seat. I'll come up a little bit. I just got a haircut, so yeah. You want to see my hair? That's what it looks like today. I'm not wearing a hat for once, right? Uh, Constellation fuzz settings four and six significantly more noisy. Um, I, it depends how you're plugged into. What guitar are you using with it? Are you using a humbucker guitar or a single coil? Uh, with that constellation fuzz, sometimes um, it can be fickle depending on um, what kind of guitar you're plugged into. But um, forget which one is six the last one because that tends to be the the crazier fuzz um, setting. So it might be a little bit noisier.
All right. Uh, I'm going to be online here for another five or ten minutes just because my camera is going to probably turn off. But um, before I go, thank you guys for hanging out and helping me test this. I'm sorry for all the dropped frames. Um, I'm going to watch it back and figure out if it's a bitrate thing. Or if anyone knows about live streaming settings and OBS, please send me a message because... I'm still trying to figure this out. Uh, let's see here. Do I play locally in Nashville? I don't. I would like to more, but um, usually I'm on the road with uh, Thompson Square. If I do play locally in Nashville, it's usually during CMA Fest or random um, um, gigs with them, like private gigs or something. Strat with three single pickups or two singles, one hum humbucker to play pop rock? Uh, it really depends, man. I have both. I like having a humbucker in the bridge just because when I, you know, hit the distortion, I kind of want that crunchy sound. So <clears throat> I'm going to vote for two singles and one humbucker right now. But that could change like next week. Do I play semi-hollow body guitars on gigs, or do I prefer solid bodies? I've played, what do I bring? I've got a Duesenberg that's semi-hollow that I used to tour with, um, but really depends on the gig. I would not take a semi-hollow out with Stone Sour or anything. Uh, I'd love to see you on stage with Kirk Fletcher, Josh Smith, and Marcus King. I've jammed, I haven't jammed with Marcus, but I've jammed with Kirk and Josh. <clears throat> Uh, when I lived in L.A., uh, I think I jammed with Kirk Fletcher at, oh, what is it called? It was on his gig, and um, we were introduced. My friend Ron Jubla, who's an amazing sax player, uh, invited me to his gig, and he um, just started talking, and Kirk invited me to jam. I don't know if I actually jammed with Kirk. He, I just jammed on his rig. Uh, Josh... Um, we jammed in Chicago, actually. I've, I tell Josh this every time I see him, but I've known of, I've seen Josh when he was 16 years old. Um, so I was in college at the University of Miami, and, and Josh is from South Florida. And one of my best friends, um, drummer Jeff Anthony, was playing with Josh in his band at the time. And Josh was 16, 17. And he was a blazing guitar player back then, you know. Um, so uh, I think we linked up once in L.A., but um, we definitely did some jams in, in Chicago. Uh, any advice on going on tour for the first time for several weeks? Yes. God, I got a lot of advice. Um... Don't overpack as far as, like, your personal luggage. Bring enough underwear for, like, let's say five to seven days and just hopefully do laundry somewhere or do sink laundry. Um, if you're, you're going to be guitar teching for yourself, make sure you bring all the stuff you need uh, short of like a soldering iron but you know make sure you have <clears throat> tools all the wrenches you need um and yeah just make sure you bring gear that's reliable uh, let's see the sax guitar and vocals i play sax and guitar vocals in what city is ideal for my type of specialties uh <clears throat> david you could be anywhere these days and and be a working musician um you could be a youtube sensation who knows do i know little wing by hendrix
what type of in-ear monitors am I using? I'm using 64 audio. They're old ones they're, when they were called 1964, but I think now they're called 64 audio. What is your favorite characteristic of a band member? Uh, not smelly. Roy Gallagher, awesome, awesome guitar player. Uh, underrated, I would think. Joe Gab I, ca I can't pronounce um, Portuguese, but Joao Gil Gilberto, I guess is the pronunciation. Great as well. Clapton lives up in Columbus, Ohio now. Are you kidding me? No way. Okay, I got to Google that. Tips on a person trying to get more into jazz. Good question, Robert. Um, it's, a, it's hard. I think really get a good teacher. Like, I, can't, I can't imagine learning jazz without having someone in front of me kind of guiding me along. I'm assuming you could probably learn on YouTube now, but there's so many aspects of jazz to learn, you know, the theory, the the different genre, you know, subgenres of jazz and you can basically start in any you know <clears throat> decade and all this stuff. It's a wide range of stuff. Um, unfortunately, I don't know any books necessarily. But it really, I get, think when I first started taking jazz guitar lessons, it was more, um, I started with bluesy oriented uh, songs like Thelonious Monk, uh, Blue Monk it's called. So I think um, there are standards to learn as far as like there's blues standards, you know, a lot of Charlie Parker tunes are blues based heads. Um, like rhythm changes, one, one six two five type stuff. If uh, that's where I would start, and kind of learn um, playing over those changes first, uh, and then go from there. You know, get into the the modal Miles Davisy stuff, and then you can get into the fusiony stuff. But um, definitely blues and rhythm rhythm changes uh, is where to start. Do I still have the Coward Titan? I sure do. It's over It's over there somewhere. Um, <clears throat> I'm about to run out of my camera battery. Hey, RJ, any tips on getting out of player's rut? Yes, if I play, I find I play the same, I play a lot of the same things, and this is why I watch you. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words, Phil. Um, sometimes just not playing for a couple days helps me. I know it sounds ass backwards, but... Um, you got to clear your head and just come back to the guitar with a fresh, you know, outlook on it. So try putting the guitar for a day or two, put, putting down the guitar for a day or two. <clears throat> All right. Got to break the resonators out more. Yes, I do. They've been, uh, I, I played my, um, Duolian a couple days ago. It's still working, but uh, yeah, the um, tricone is, I still love that guitar. I need to do it. Definitely uh, gonna break those out more. <laughs> Los Lobos, I love Los Lobos. only take four pedals with me what would I bring there goes my camera all right I'm gonna answer a couple more questions sorry guys sorry guys I know the audio is still running <coughs> four pedals I would bring a tuner I would bring a JHS double barrel I would bring an Ocean's 11 reverb and then for the fourth pedal an exotic 
EP compressor. I don't know. That's just off the top of my head. All right, I'm going to skip down a little bit, guys. Um, let's see. Tom Harhai, hey, man. I miss the rock and roll relics. How do you how do the humbucker style ones play? They play awesome. I'm going to go on record saying that I prefer <coughs> his single cut humbucker guitars to the the other brand that starts with a G that has offices here in Nashville and Memphis. Um yes, Tom Harhide. Jeff did play with Josh Smith. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to play like a little one more jam and maybe answer some questions here. Uh, but thanks for sticking around, and I'm sorry about all the dropped frames. Um, what the heck? Local files. All right. Let's find a jam here. Jam Track Central, guys, if you haven't checked them out, um, they've got some cool jam tracks, and yes, I've paid for all of them. I don't get them for free, and I'm trying to have a very large library here of their stuff that I'm trying to sort through, and I can't find anything. That's crazy. All right, going into my hard drive. Where are you, hard drive? Okay. Okay. course it's yeah my computer's getting slow jam tracks jam tracks central okay so i'm going to do this on a baritone so i'm not sure what key any of this stuff is going to be i'm going into denny illitz bourbon street blues uh let's see what this sounds like Guys, feeling that? Okay, why don't I do that? Let me put it into something here. classical guitar I don't I think I answered that last time I don't have a nylon string guitar but I would love to get one So that was a short jam track. Let's uh, find the larger, larger one. Here we go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Thank you. 
one, but I've never really used one. Chaz, I was going to answer you. Uh, I never played with Janai. That wasn't me. That must have been somebody else. 97, 98, I was still living in South Florida. I was still in college, actually. But I'd like to find out who it was. Maybe I have a twin out there. Have a great uh, Labor Day weekend here. for hanging out and I'll uh, I'll make sure that I post something about when I'm going to be live again this was fun and I hope the dropped frames and the audio and the video wasn't too bad um, but yeah let's do this again <laughs>